Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Terry Freeman, President of the Community Foundation for the National Capital Region. The Community Foundation is the Metro Region's largest grant source. It encourages effective giving and provides leadership on critical issues. Prior to joining the Community Foundation in 1996, Terry was the founding executive director of the Freddie Mac Foundation. She has been named by Washingtonian Magazine as one of the 100 most powerful women in Washington. Terry has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Terry, for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me, Mark. So leading a community foundation is a tremendous responsibility. You are not only responsible to the people who support the foundation yes. through, uh, through their provision of financial support, but you are also responsible to grantees and ultimately to the people who benefit mm -hmm. from the programs of grantees. Mm -hmm. Talk about how the, uh, the, the community foundation functions within the national capital region. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. Unlike a private foundation that for the most part just has to focus on granting dollars out to the nonprofit community, the community foundation as a public charity has to uh, raise dollars as well as grant dollars. But I think that your emphasis on uh, the end user, if you will, the beneficiary of those nonprofit organizations is a good one because that's what we try to focus on. We try to focus our work on making sure that we are always thinking about how that end user, that beneficiary, is going to benefit when Mr. and Mrs. Donor actually establishes a fund at the Community Foundation. So I like to kind of think of the Community Foundation as a hub uh, for giving, that we actually are in the center connecting people with resources to nonprofit organizations that are providing quality services that are meeting the needs of individuals that for whatever reason have need for additional support. And we work throughout the metropolitan Washington region, so that's the District of Columbia, Northern Virginia, and Montgomery and Prince George's County. We, we're a connector. We make these connections, and uh, the intention is that as we make the connection between uh, the folks that are contributing with the nonprofits that have the services that are needed by the public, that we're making lifelong connections, and that the support for these organizations will continue. And this is about impact. Talk, yes. talk about who you impact and the range of programs that you and your donors support. Well, so here's the thing. Uh, an individual comes in and they say, you know, we're really interested in working through the Community Foundation to do our philanthropy, and our interest is the environment. And then another donor comes in and says, our interest is in education. And another comes in and says, well, we're really interested in the arts and culture. We don't prohibit folks from contributing in any particular way. So all of our many donors, and we have probably over a thousand individuals associated with the foundation, may have their own areas of emphasis. But the foundation in and of itself has an agenda, if you will, for the region, which is to help people secure economic security that everyone in the region has economic security. And we really focus in three areas, education, workforce development, and safety net preservation. So as folks are doing their individual interest areas and making recommendations, we are always trying to help them also see the need to focus on those three areas that we have identified as an agenda for our region. So there's kind of this dual track, I would mm -hmm. say, of funding that's going out to the community. We have donors with their particular interests, and then we have the community foundation agenda that has been informed, frankly, by the broader community. But the value that you deliver to your donors is, is far broader than that. You act as connectors. You act as, as advisors, mm -hmm. a knowledge base. Mm -hmm. You act as a repository for uh, various support services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it is uh, really interesting to see how these community foundations can function to ensure that uh, philanthropy is substantially more effective exactly. when pursued uh, together mm -hmm. with others who yes. are like-minded. So uh, sometimes people come to the Community Foundation out of uh, the knowledge of, if you will, the ease of being able to do business and do philanthropy through the Community Foundation. 
our goal with those donors is to help them really enjoy the act of philanthropy. And so what we want to do is we want to teach people as much as we possibly can about how to give wisely, but also about what works right. and what doesn't work. And while we would never tell a donor, oh no, we don't think you should give your money to a particular organization, we will always provide them with the things that they should look for in a quality nonprofit organization with regard to leadership and financial uh, sustainability and the board and uh, Im impactful programs that actually have some measures associated with it. That's where I think we have, I would say, an edge um, to other charitable gift funds, if you will, that don't provide a staff uh, to support those individuals who are establishing funds because really our goal is to make the experience of giving the most rewarding experience for the donor but also the most beneficial experience for the nonprofit so that they actually are getting what they need from the donor public. Well very often if, you, if uh, one is establishing a very very large fund um, then uh, these organizations, these individuals, would wish to establish a foundation with a staff that mm -hmm. can that has diverse expertise. But a countervailing uh, uh, sentiment would be the one expressed by Warren Buffett, who had billions of dollars right. to give away, and he said, "Why should I reinvent the wheel? Let right. me find somebody I trust that has the co the, the expertise, and we won't create a second uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. that will absorb our resources. Mm -hmm. Instead." We'll give it to the Gates Foundation and and, um, and use their infrastructure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're experiencing that kind of a, a dynamic as well. That's exactly right. And another real benefit is is similar to, to Warren Buffett with the Gates Foundation is, okay, I believe in the direction that they're moving. I believe that what they are investing in is actually going to have a result I want to support what it is that they are investing in. And with the Community Foundation, you're talking about many, many donors. Right. So if we can create um, initiatives or programs that are funding nonprofit organizations in a particular interest area where we can gather support from many donors, you know, there's this this uh, term or this type of giving called collective impact, mm -hmm. where we are just uh, Pu pulling together the resources, all working toward a common goal with some standard measurements. The more we can do that, I think, the more effective we'll be. Because the idea of what used to be, I think, the older model of philanthropy that says, you know, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to hope that I get the result that I want to get, that's not going to work any longer. We really have to look at the work of philanthropy as a three-leg stool that requires, you know, private, public, and nonprofit sector working together. And the Community Foundation really does afford the opportunity for people to work in that, um, in that style and fashion. How do you create a learning organization that learns from your donors and from the research that they've done leading up to their decisions and that learns from your uh, grantees on a continual basis? I think it really is, Mark, about bringing, sometimes I call them strange bedfellows together, because there, there was a prevailing thought at one time that, frankly, we're not going to learn much from the donors. We're the ones that have all the knowledge. We're going to impart all of this knowledge on these donors, right. not accepting the fact that you know, many of these people have been doing this in some way, shape, or form for many, many years. So I think um, the, the secret sauce is really providing a safe space um, for convening of variety types of folks that utilize the Community Foundation. We like to consider ourselves a, a, a round table almost, where we can have donors at the table and nonprofits at the table, public sector representatives at the table, corporate folks at the table, talking about the issues that are important to these people and looking at ways we can try to figure out what are the best solutions or what are the best alternatives. It's not a quick process. Right. It's, it's a longer process. And there's a lot of trust building that has to take place before you really start to have things kind of clicking. But I think it does happen over time. Almost all of the work the Community Foundation does is in a collaborative fashion because we frankly don't have enough unrestricted resource to make much of a ripple 
in, in the big issues that are facing our region. But when you put a little bit in and then somebody else puts a little bit in and another person puts a little bit in, you know, you can really create a pool of dollars that actually is meaningful. And that's what we have tried to do. And it always includes donors. It includes other area foundations. Um, and when possible, it will include public sector dollars as well. Your thematic focus of the three areas that, that you're focusing on mm -hmm. Uh, also increase impact because in your dialogue uh, with, with people you can you can ask them those questions um, how does in your mind this actually impact our economic health and vitality of this region well you know the the areas that we identified came out of the fact that there's this growing gulf if you will in our region between those that have and those that right. don't and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and in a region that has as many resources, and I'm not just talking about financial resources, I'm just talking about the capacity of this region, the richness of this region, the culture that is, is here in this region, it almost seems unfathomable that we have areas of the city where there's nearly 30% unemployment. It just doesn't seem like it's possible. So knowing that the region does better when everybody does well, we thought that would be the best place for us to focus. And we looked at what I think is really a continuum. You know, education is on one end, workforce is on the other. It's all on one continuum. Right. You can't do, you can't reach economic security uh, well without investing in either. How do you assure effectiveness and, and collect the data so that you understand where the people are uh, are being effective, where, where, where the organizations are being effective, without becoming obnoxious? Uh, in, in that process. Well, uh, so this is where I think it's really critical that we look at ourselves not as grant makers but partners. Uh, if we just look at ourselves as this third party foundation that's making a grant and asking for a grant report at the end of a particular cycle and badgering people, well, what about, you know, we don't want just this metric of how many, we want to know what the progress has been over time. It slips into micromanagement. It and does. And so what we want to do is be a partner with the organization within the area that they are working in. And one of the things that we've learned over, the, over time is you can ask for a report at a point in time, but it's really the many points in time mm -hmm. that you have to measure. So I'm a believer in evaluating as you go, not at the end. And I'll say that and then have to put a disclaimer in there that says, yet we still ask our nonprofit partners to provide us with, you know, evaluative reports at the end of, say, a year's grant cycle. But now we're asking them to b build in those benchmarks throughout the grant period that are a little bit more descriptive about where we're going. Is that a proscriptive process or is it a, is it a dialogue in which you are trying to work out? with your grantee what the appropriate benchmark is. How does it fit into their environment? With the program staff, the program officer mm -hmm. staff work with the nonprofit to try to figure out, okay, what's the right thing that we should, we should measure? And sometimes we miss the mark. Uh, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we miss the mark, but then we can modify along the way. I just, the static approach to um, evaluating and coming up with this one thing for me doesn't work because the process is far too fluid, the process is far too dynamic, and no case, frankly, is exactly the same when you're talking about human right. beings. And so we look at this as a little bit more of a kind of moving target to see if we're just moving side to side, or are we moving side to side but moving up at the same time? Because ultimately that's what we want to see. We want to see the progress that's being made, and sometimes, what you'll see is you'll see some progress and then you see a little yeah. bit of back and then you see a little bit more up. So that's acceptable. So you're becoming an engaged advisor as well to, uh, to your grantees, just as you are to your donors. Yes, and I would like to think that, frankly, our grantees are advisors to us because we're learning as they're learning. They help inform how we move forward. If, right. you know, the, the prevailing thought at one period in time may have been X, but now we've learned that it should be Y. And that doesn't come from us. That comes from the people who are actually doing the work. So you accept feedback. I mean, the last thing you want to do is 
is annoy your grantees. If, if they come back and they say, you know, there's a better way to do this, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be responsive to, to that type yeah. of feedback. Absolutely. I think the paternalistic model of philanthropy is a dead model. I, I just don't think it gets you what you want. Yeah, you've made a grant. It may actually make you feel good. In the long run, if, you're, if your goal is beyond just feeling good right. and, and to actually make some meaningful contribution uh, that has some positive change associated with it, this has got to be a dialogue. It's got to be a constant. And you know what else? We have to accept a certain level of risk. One of the things I think is that philanthropy has gotten a little bit too safe. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants the sure bet. There isn't such a thing as a sure <laughs> bet. And frankly, philanthropy is a little bit of a crapshoot. It's a calculated risk that you're taking, right. but you have to take some risk because without risk, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be innovative and that's what you want out of philanthropy. How many uh, people do you have and how do you organize the foundation? We have a staff of about 30 people mm -hmm. and that staff is divided into three areas basically. One is what we call our philanthropic services group and, and those folks are responsible for actually helping people, donors, nonprofits with the topical information that we have at the Community Foundation. They're the ones that work directly one-on-one -on -one with the grantees that we have. They also have interaction with the donor. So if a donor, in fact we had a donor once ask us if we could provide him with some information on noise pollution. So somewhere in our office is a report on noise pollution if anybody wants to know more about it. So that's the philanthropic services area. Then we have an area called uh, professional services and professional services is the area where we are actually developing assets mm -hmm. so we have folks there working with individuals and families financial wealth advisors corporations that sort of thing looking to raise money establish funds at the community foundation talk about the diverse areas of funding that you uh, that you provide um, uh, through the region and uh, also, um, if you could, uh, discuss the impacts that you see coming down on your grantees, mm -hmm. given the very, very severe um, uh, financial situation okay. that we are facing here in the country. Um, everyone's talking about the fiscal cliff. Right. Even if we don't or fall off. We're not talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we don't fall off the fiscal cliff. I like to say we have already begun the descent down the fiscal slope. Mm -hmm. There is going to be an economic impact, particularly in this region, as we have more federal um, cutbacks with regard to federal funding. Uh, the government already is not hiring as much. The jobs are being eliminated through attrition. Uh, federal cutbacks will have a disproportionate impact on this region because we are so heavily dependent on federal contracting. That's going to have an impact with regard to how money flows charitably or philanthropically. Given that, there are uh, a, a couple of things that I think people who are being charitable and want to continue to be charitable and want to have an impact might want to think about when they are uh, making grants. The first is, I know it's not sexy, but it's so important to provide general operating support to these nonprofit organizations. They just can't do the sexy programs without the general operating support. And if you have faith in the leadership in the organization, if you have faith that their financials are in good standing, that the board is paying attention, and if you know the programs have been strong, why wouldn't you invest in the general operating support? So that would be one thing. The second would be not making nonprofits try to figure this out every year and actually think about doing multi-year granting. Um, I know people don't like to book up their money, if you mm -hmm. will, but it is so helpful to the nonprofit because it, it eliminates their need to have to do it all over right. again every year. And I also think there's something about establishing a relationship 
when you create a multi-year kind of funding stream where when we're talking about that impact and we're talking about the benchmarks and the evaluation, it really provides you an opportunity to come into the organization and check out things, if you will, over a longer period of time and see the, the change that, that is, is being created. And the third area is around building the capacity of these nonprofit organizations. Some people have a real affinity for a particular organization. I encourage people, if you believe in that organization that much, why not help them start an endowment? Because that endowment is so important for the long-term life and sustainability of the organization. And we don't have enough nonprofit organizations in the region that have an endowment that is actually going... It, in bad times, and that's what the endowment does, right? In bad times, you would always have a stream of, of revenue. Well, so much energy gets um, absorbed in the, in the chase for um, short-term dollars. Mm. Um, imagine what it would be like if more of that energy can be invested into programs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that the idea of, of really thinking through your philanthropy and thinking through the impacts and thinking it through as if you are investing your scarce resources in impacts. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, if you're investing it in stock market, you're looking to get a return on your investment, but you don't put a penny in everything. That's right. Uh, you, you, you think about what is right, and then you make your investments, and then you watch the investments, and That's you try right. to help them along. And you modify when you need to modify right. a little bit so that you're getting the, the best return that you possibly can. And I do think that that's a part of the beauty of the Community Foundation, that we can help people walk through that. We can help them figure it out. But I, I think that if your desire is really to support a particular nonprofit or nonprofits, um, then we need to think about how we do this thing called philanthropy right. in a little different manner than maybe we have done it in the past. I think the times call for it. It is so wonderful to, to get such a comprehensive view of what is going on in the Capital Region. Thank you so much, Terry Freeman, for sharing with us, and thank you for your insights. Thank you. It was enjoyable. It was a pleasure.